Well guys, I'm not having a good day. Um, started off with uh, just a freaking water pump, which I changed. That's all nice and dandy and stuff. The old one wasn't really that bad, but uh, I changed it out anyways. And uh, freaking, uh, yeah, just chasing down leaks and stuff. And uh, had a big freaking leak on the radiator. So let's see if I can get a good shot of it. Right there, yeah, it friggin' is leaking like a sieve, so I tried to solder it, and that didn't work. The torch ran out of propane, so I uh, used the tor the big torch, oxycetylene torch, and tried brazing the whole shot, that didn't work. So uh, I got friggin' pretty frustrated. Um, yeah, that's why all the friggin' frame is uh, wet and everything, but... Uh, so I did a rad flush or a coolant system flush and that worked uh, all fine and dandy. Um, yeah, except for when I took it for a test drive to get it up to temp. Uh, it blew crap out of that everywhere and uh, the pinhole leaked a bunch and uh, she went up to about 70 degrees Celsius and then uh, it dropped down to about 50 or so and then uh, friggin stopped and turned around and as I was turning around it friggin spiked up to about 108 degrees Celsius so I was just hoping that was an airlock or something but I've been dicking with this friggin since let's say two o'clock and it is oop that's flashlight <laughs> it is 720 right now so I've been at this pretty much all day um, yeah, I need to do my heater core as well because that blew up. So what I ended up doing was just uh, connecting those two hoses, bypassing the heater core. Frig is it cold in my cab now. <laughs> if I drive for too long, it freaking fogs up. So, But anyways, um, what I did is I ended up grabbing uh, what little pepper we had left at the house and I freaking dumped it into the rad and it's supposed to freaking, uh, when it pressures up and starts getting hot and stuff, it'll force the pepper down into the hole and then friggin uh, melt it well not melt it but it'll it'll bake it into the hole and plug it which it seems kinda like it did I still see dripping but I don't know if that's residual stuff off of uh, the frame and whatnot but uh, I'm hoping it friggin sealed it enough for me to friggin save up and get a new rad because this one's pooched um, but yeah, I didn't even really get to the heater core today because uh, I'm going to need about eight hours or so to do it. I got to disconnect the uh, AC and then I got to pull the dash. Um, figured out a, well, go to Mopar1973man.com and look up his freaking Cummins articles. Friggin' awesome. Uh, but anyways, what he does, holy focus Batman, there we go. What he does is he'll pull the dash, uh, he'll undo the top bolts on the dash, the anchor bolt on the uh, on either side. Drop the steering column, lay just lay it on your seat, and then there's a couple bolts in the middle there. Pull the dash out that way and hook it from the bottom latch onto the uh, holy crap handle. And then uh, you got some bolts for the HVAC system, and you freaking wiggle that out the bottom. And apparently, you can get it out pretty quick, and then rip it apart and fix your uh, heater core. Uh, yeah, I'm just freaking, I don't have time for that right now, so I had to bypass it, and it's colder as frig, but, uh, yeah, last test drive I did, it worked pretty good, um, it got up, just about up to temp, 90 degrees is the middle on my gauge, which is when the thermostat's supposed to open, it got up to 88, and then it started dropping, so it's probably probably opened the thermostat and freaking cycled all the pepper and coolant and stuff but uh, yeah and then it started drinking from uh, the overflow which is a good sign I guess because it'd be getting rid of the airlock that's in there one thing is I have no idea how these things work like I, I understand how it pressures up and then it'll shoot overflow into here but how does it draw from here I don't know because like I don't think there's a vacuum in here if there is then it makes sense because it'll freaking pop the, the rad guy open and start drawing fluid from the reservoir, but I just, I don't know how that part works, but um, anyways, yeah, it started uh, drinking it, drunk, drunk, 
it's all drunk. <laughs> Maybe about uh, three quarters of an inch of fluid. So, yeah. But uh, when I freaking filled this thing up for the last time, what I did is I freaking took the, uh, the thermostat housing off, took the thermostat out, poured into here until it friggin' uh, I started seeing it rise up into the engine block, put the thermostat in, tighten the housing down, pulled that hose off, filled that hose up, and then freaking stuffed it back onto there, and then filled this guy up, and I uh, used the jack stand to freaking lift the sides of the truck. It was a whole freaking procedure and a half, but uh, I got as much air out as I could before I uh, took it for a test drive, and it, it seems to be cycling and working and doing what it's supposed to do, and uh, as long as that leak frigs off, then uh, it should be a good sealed system. But I had been really low on coolant uh, before I friggin' noticed that my heater core was leaking. Like, you pop the rag cap and you can't even see it. Like, you flash my sh flashlight down there and it's like, holy crap, I'm really low. But uh, another thing, when I was friggin' dicking around here, I uh, busted my pet cock. And that's what's leaking. That is what is leaking. Okay, so I guess my fix fixed it, but the pet cock's still leaking. So I need to get a new rad. I'll see if I can show you guys what happened. Oh, now you all know my password. Ha ha ha, I'm gonna have to change it. Not like any of you guys will steal my phone anyways. But uh, yeah, you guys freaking, um, when I was dicking around with this the first time, um, that pet cock there freaking twisted out and uh, it freaking ruined the, uh, how it fits in there so I had a wire tied around there but when I was brazing uh, it friggin uh, melted a little bit but um, yeah I put the coolant flush stuff in there and then tightened it back up and then put the rad well I had the rad in but um, I drilled a hole in the petcock you can see it there and had the wire tied around it but um, yeah I guess it's still leaking for freak's sakes but uh, anyways when I had to drain all that stuff out, I had to freaking cut my wire and I can't get a wire in there with uh, with the friggin' rad in because the intercooler's in the way. This thing had been in a friggin' front end collision or something because this mount's all bent to crap. And uh, what I want to do eventually is cut the front of the frame right off and I got that other friggin' Dodge frame that I want to put on here but uh, yeah, I'm friggin' I'm beat. I want to go home and cry myself to sleep. <laughs> So, yeah, anyways, uh, I'll clean up my mess here, and uh, yeah, so friggin' check out Mopar1973man.com and uh, figure out how to fix your crap the easy way. Like, this guy knows tricks to everything. He's friggin' genius with these engines. So anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and uh, until next time, take care. Oh, and the reason why I uh, don't have any footage of before, like, actually working on this thing, because there was uh, a lot of frustration, so <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't want that in the video, so, uh, yeah, it's just uh, the aftermath of what I had to deal with, so, yeah, anyways, uh, I guess I'll wrap up the video now. <laughs>